Welcome to another Rules Primer video. Today we're going to be looking at Dungeon Pets, a two to four player Euro strategy game where you are going to be playing the, each player plays the head of a pet store where you're going to raise these uh, monstrous creatures and um, enter them in exhibitions and also sell them to uh, dungeon lords to stock their dungeons with. Here I have the game set up for two players and so in this video I'm going to go over over the components of the game and then I'm going to look at the victory conditions and then uh, go quickly go over the turn sequence then I want to go over the different need cards and uh, what they represent and how to deal with them and then also uh, look at scoring exhibitions and how to sell a pet so we've got a lot to cover but you'll see that although the game is pretty complex it, it fits together pretty well and, and the boards and everything the cards all have nice icons that make it uh, a lot easier to uh, figure out what you need to do. So let's start with the components of the game. Okay, I'm going to start with the components that each player gets. So every player gets this kind of t-shirt looking board and that's it looks this way because you you actually pull up this screen in a certain part of the game so that you can kind of hide what you're doing behind it. The, um, these boards have a nice turn sequence reference here. They also show you the different needs uh, distributions for each of the color cards. And then it kind of shows you in icon form what each need card, what you have to do to fulfill each need card, which we'll go over a little bit later. It has a space here for the imps, for bidding the imps, which we'll talk about later. It also has this little space to put your leftover imps. These are your imps. You start out with um, six imps and two gold and you'll use these uh, as you'll see later to basically place in action spaces on the main board that let you do different things and get different stuff. Then you have a spot here for food. This is for vegetables and this is for meat and at the end of every turn the uh, food will spoil. Uh, vegetables will spoil after three turns and meat will, will spoil after two. Then you have this kind of storage area here. If you get artifacts and stuff, then you place them there. This is just the first player token. One, this will alternate each turn. Each player has this uh, board, separate board, that contains spaces for four cages and one starter cage with one uh, poop token in it. These are manure cubes. It also, each space, I mean, each cage also has a space for an add-on, which we'll look at those a little bit later. Okay, so that's what everybody, what every player gets. Now let's look at the uh, main board here. The main board has a victory track around the outside. Uh, it has spaces for several different actions, which we'll look at uh, later on. And it also has a scoring track for exhibitions, um, place to hold the money, and then a place to hold these other uh, gold tokens are obviously money tokens. These green ones are vegetable tokens, red ones are meat, and as you'll see later, they, these are stalls that you can get the buy meat and buy vegetables in. And let's see, um, okay, over here is the stack of um, monsters that you'll get, pets that will come out. You can see it starts, the two player game starts with two uh, young pets and one older pet. Uh, each pet has a dial on it, I'm not sure if this will zoom. Um, young pets start, actually this is messed up there. Young pets start with two spaces and then as they age this will increase, their needs will increase, but also their value will increase up here as well as they grow. So the game starts with two young pets and one older pet. You can see this pet has three spaces here, it's a little bit older. Uh, these are artifacts. In a two-player game, you don't start with any on the board. In a four-player, you start with um, one on each one of those. And there's a spot on the rule book that shows what each of these do. They give you bonuses, help you fulfill needs. Uh, I probably won't go over that in this video just for time, but um, those are nice, simple um, icons that you can look up in the book. This is kind of a secondary board. This shows the uh, what turn it is. And then these are exhibitions. Uh, so starting with the second turn, and there will be an exhibition that will turn over, and we'll look at how to score those later. But planning for these exhibitions is an important part of the strategy. Then it also has the dungeon lords themselves. Uh, starting with turn three, a dungeon lord will be available to buy pets. 
And then here at the end is the final scoring. Uh, so after after the last turn, you're going to do these these uh, you're going to score this, and that will um, determine a final winner. These are the manure tokens. These are suffering tokens. If you put enough of these on a pet, it will die. And also these usually act as negative points when you try to show or sell a pet. These are mutation tokens. If you don't fulfill the magic need correctly, then your pet can mutate. And most of the time, uh, you're going to be selling it for less because you can't sell a mutant for the same price as a nice healthy pet. These are potion cards. Potion cards you can buy by taking an action on the board and these will they're basically a wild card that will help you resolve one need card. So they're very handy. These are the different color cards, the need cards. We'll look over what each one of these means later. But as I mentioned before, you can look on your player aid and it'll show you the distribution of the needs within these different colors. Okay, so those are the components. I know I said a lot of, we'll discuss this later, but um, everything will, will kind of fall into place as we go through the rest of the, the turn order and also the um, this action spaces on the board. So let's look at how you win the game. Okay, you win the game by scoring the most victory points, which is denoted by this track along the outside of the board. You get points in two major ways. The first way is to win exhibitions, which means you have the highest score on an exhibition, or I think the second highest. We'll look at that in more detail at the end of the video. But you'll gain point victory points for the exhibition. The other way is to sell your pets to dungeon lords. So when you sell your pet, you will gain a certain number of victory points. And then final, finally, from the final scoring, which you'll get... Uh, victory points for your money and how much food and potions and stuff you have and then uh, some final points for your for your pets so basically that's that's the that's how you win you try to get the most victory points at the end of the sixth turn okay let's look at the turn sequence Turn sequence is pretty simple, and it's actually outlined in all these little icons on your player sheet. You just have to remember what all the icons are and what they mean. So the first phase is the reveal information phase. So in this one, the, uh, the eye means you reveal new information. So you start the game being able to see what's on the exhibition on turn two and the customer that's on turn three. So for the first turn you're taken care of, but after that every other turn you're going to move the turn marker and then you're going to reveal the top the first unrevealed exhibition and the first unrevealed customer. So you're, every turn you're going to be able to see the exhibition that's um, basically two turns. Just turn you're on and then the, turn, the next turn and then the customer is the same way. The second thing is to add new items. So you're going to fill up, you're going to add new pets. Now again, you don't do this on the first turn because it's already set up, but you're going to add new pets. You're going to put uh, new meat and vegetables out in the stalls and you can see what you're supposed to put out that's listed here on the action board I mean on the tracker board you can see the first turn you have two vegetables nothing in the uh, mixed stall and two meat and in this one you'll have two vegetables two veggies and one meat in the mixed stall and two meat so that's listed out, out the turn you're on you're going to check that and fill fill out the stalls you're also going to put new um, artifacts out so you're going to take away whatever artifacts are left left from the previous turn you're going to draw two more you're going to put new add-ons out so you're going to take away whatever's there draw two new add-ons and put new cages so you're going to take away those and draw new cages from the stack to fill up those and finally on this phase you're going to collect income so the first the starting player takes one gold and everybody else takes two golds and add it and adds it to their player board and then the next phase is the imps basically you're going to take your available imps and you're going to bid sort of um, for turn order and then you're going to place those on the board to to gain certain things to get to buy pets to buy cages to buy upgrades to get food 
all kinds of things to get more imps and we'll look over we'll look at what all those different action spaces do a little bit later in the video but for now what you're going to do is you're going to take all your imps and you're going to raise your shield and you're going to place them you're going to place them in groupings within these little hallways now you want to place the one the grouping with the most to the left and then kind of lower as they get lower. That's why these hallways get smaller. And you can also place gold with them. Now the gold uh, counts as an imp and it's lost at the end um, after, the, after the turn and some spaces do require you to have gold. Like when you buy a pet you have to have gold with your imp. Also when you buy a cage you have to have at least two imps. So you're going to want to keep that in mind. So then after everyone has placed as many imps as they want, you don't have to put all your imps. You can leave some back here. Then we're going to reveal. And then starting with whoever has the biggest group on the left, they're going to get to place their imps on one of the spaces. And then going, then, you know, so everybody that has three imps is going to get to go. Then everybody that has two imps, then everybody that has one, that sort of thing. And if there's ties, then you start with the start player and you go clockwise. So, that means that's placing your imps and that's taking your actions. Next, you're going to place any pets that you bought this turn into a cage. And if you don't have a cage, then the pet's going to run away. Then you're going to draw need cards. So for each pet you have, let's say I bought this pet, put it in my cage. This pet has two, yeah, uh, two green needs and one purple. So I'm going to draw two green needs and one purple. And everybody's doing this at the same time. And you're going to add that to your hand. You have a starting hand of one of each color. You're going to add that to your hand. That's what this symbol means. And next, you're going to assign needs to the pets. So now you're going to look at all your pets. In this case, I only have one. I need to assign it two green and one purple. So I'm going to look at all my cards. And let's see. Out of my three I'm gonna, out of these three greens, I'm going to have to pick two. So I want to pick ones that I can fulfill. So if I have food, and you can see this pet eats meat or vegetables. So if I have vegetables um, or meat, then I'm going to probably want to pick these two so I know I can fulfill them. Uh, if not, I could put this one, which just means I put a poop thing in the a poop marker in the cage. And we'll go over what all these needs mean later. But basically, you're going to pick two. So let's say I have the food. So I'm going to put, and then I have to pick one purple. Both these purple ones are magic, so I don't really have a choice. So, and then you're going to kind of line them up as they are, and you're going to flip them over next to your pet, like so. That's what that symbol means. Next, you're going to resolve those needs. So everyone is going to turn over their need cards, and they're going to resolve them. For example, We'll look at these later again, but for example, in this one I'm going to have to discard a food, and this one I'm going to have to discard a food, and then um, for the magic, it just uh, means I need a magical, well, we'll look at that later, but basically you're going to resolve all your needs, and everyone's doing this at the same time. Then you're going to do an exhibition. So on the first turn, there's not an exhibition. So this would be the end of the first turn, basically. We just skip that phase. But on the second through the sixth, you're going to resolve this exhibition. You're going to move your exhibition scoring, and then you're going to score victory points for the results of that exhibition. Next, we're going to sell a pet. So starting with turn three, you're going to have a customer. And everyone can sell one pet to this customer uh, based on how well the needs that you assigned to your pet match with what this uh, customer likes. And we'll look at how to resolve those later. But basically, once everyone has an opportunity to sell one pet to this customer, then that phase is over. And they're going to score victory points and gain gold for that. Then we discard all of our need cards. So we discard these back into the discard piles. And each, each of these colors is going to have its own discard pile. Then any leftover imps, so any imps that you did not place on the board, um, and that's another thing that I forgot to mention. When you're placing an imps on the board, you don't actually have to place them. They can just say, oh, they're just going to stay. So, but any imps that you have uh, that did not be that were not placed on the board this turn can clean out poops, poop from empty cages. So you can clean out, if you had uh, up to two manure tokens in an empty cage, they can take those away. And then they can also get you uh, gold.
Then the last stage is just kind of a cleanup stage. So you're going to, all your pets are going to age, and the way that that works is you're going to look at, let's say I did not sell this pet, uh, you're going to look at that, and that has two arrows in this little space here, which means I'm going to move it up two. So it's going to have four needs showing. Now, you can see now the next turn it has it up one, so I'm just going to move it up one. And see, it still gets, it goes up one, goes up one, and then eventually it just won't age. It'll get to a point where it doesn't go up anymore. And as pets get older, as I mentioned before, their, meet, their needs grow, but so does the value that they'll get when you sell them. And also, more needs means uh, more opportunities to match with customers and with exhibitions. So they kind of get more powerful, even if they do get more needy. Uh, then you're going to age your food. So any food that you have here moves over one, one space towards the, the um, spoiled section. And any food that's in the spoiled section, you discard it. And then finally, all your imps come home. So you take all the imps off the board and bring them back home. So that's the turn sequence. Uh, it seems like there's a lot of moving parts, but again, it kind of gels as you play it. Okay, let's look at the different action spaces on the board and what they can do. Okay, first I want to talk about these little green uh, imps you might have noticed on here. This is because I'm playing, I have it set up for a two-player game, and when you have a two- or a three-player game, then you're going to take one of the colors that you're not using and you're going to you're going to block some of the spaces um, that's ar that are on the board. Now, by the way, this board is double-sided, so the four-player side is actually on the other side, and this is for two or three players. Um, you can see every turn these little guys are going to move. There's some arrows on the board, and they're going to move and block different spaces uh, each turn. Okay, let's start down here in this corner and we'll just kind of go around the board. If you place an imp right here in this space, you're going to be able to choose one of these add-ons um, to, to take and place it on one of the ca cages on your board. That's going to give you various benefits. For example, this one will automatically f uh, take care of one meat need. And those are all explained. They're, they're usually pretty simple, like this one will like, give you one uh, magical defense to that cage. But if you don't understand it, those are all detailed in the rule books. These two spaces are going to let you buy one of these uh, size 2 pets, so the younger pets. And you can see there's a little gold piece on this spot, which means you have to put an imp with gold, at least one imp, and then some gold for, to be able to choose a pet. So for our 2 to 3 player game, this means that only uh, one player is going to be able to buy a young pet this turn. This space up here is to buy an older pet. I think I took the older pet off. Oh, there he is. Again, you have to have an imp, at least one imp, and some gold to get the pet. Now, when you when you buy a pet, you don't have to put it directly in a cage. You can put it off to the side, and then later on in the turn sequence, you get to assign it to a cage. These two spaces allow you to buy one of the three available cages. And you can see there's two imps there. That means that you have to have at least two, a group of two imps, on that space because they have to be able to carry the cage home. And so when you buy a cage, you are going to assign it to one of your open slots, or you're going to remove a cage that's already there and put it, put it in a new, that space. Let's see. This, spot's, this spot allows you to take both of the artifacts so usually there will be two artifacts there and you'll be able to take both of those and place it in your storage area and those artifacts give you various bonuses which you you can see in the rule book this space lets you take all of the vegetable uh, squares that are in the vegetable stall this one lets you take all of the vegetable and meat squares that are in the mixed stall and this one lets you take the meat squares from the meat stall Let's see, this one lets you recruit imps. So basically, you're going to, um, when you place an imp here, you're going to find, look up on the action board, and the current turn, you're going to take those imps and any of the ones that you haven't taken before then. So example, for example, if this was turn four, and I was yellow, I would take this imp, that imp, and that imp. So I would get three imps, and I would get to add them, and, and then in future turns, I would get to add them to my board, and in future turns I could send them out to do stuff. This is the hospital. You get to draw a potion card, which I, as I mentioned earlier is like a wild card. And any imps that are injured, basically if a, 
if a creature bursts out of your cage, if your cage isn't strong enough, uh, you can injure an imp. And if you have any imps that are injured, then they get to join this group and they get to come home at the end of the turn. This is the platform. Basically, when you're selling a, cre a pet, there's two options, either in the black market or on the platform. And the platform gets you more points, um, more gold, whereas the black market does not. It gets you less. But to sell on the platform, you have to use an imp that's on this platform. So you're going to place imps here, and these don't return to your, bor to your burrow. These are the only ones that don't go home at the end of the turn. And then you can use those to sell them for a higher price to sell your pets later on in the turn. This one lets you volunteer to help judge the exhibition. Basically, it gives you a plus two to your scoring in the exhibition on that round. And I think I got them all. Uh, yep. So those are the action spaces. So each turn you're going to set up your groups of imps and you're going to send them uh, out to these different spaces. Um, and again, you you block spaces. So if you're the first one and, and go to the to go here, then your opponents cannot go there that turn. They have to wait till the next turn. So that's the action spaces. Next, let's look at the need cards and how to resolve them. Okay, let's look at how to resolve the needs cards. So for each pet, you're going to assign a number of needs, and then at a certain phase, you're going to resolve each of those needs. So here's how you do it. There's a handy little sheet here that once you get to know the icons will help you kind of jog your memory. Um, so this first one is a hunger need. What you're going to do there is you're going to discard either a meat or a vegetable, depending upon if your pet is a meat eater or a vegetable or an omnivore. And for each one that you're, so you're either going to to discard a meat or a vegetable, or if you can't do that, you're going to place a suffering token. Place a suffering token on your pet, and again, those suffering tokens will. Uh, reduce the number of victory points you get, and if you get enough of them, then your pet can die. This is a poop need. You're just basically going to take a manure token, put it in your cage. Now, manure tokens don't actually do anything right away, but if you assign a disease need later on, then th then the poop total poop tokens add to that, and make make it make the disease more powerful, and also they can subtract. Your, from your score and, and when you try to sell the pet it's, and on some exhibitions. So this is a play need. Basically your pet just needs to play. So you can resolve that either by using a empty, I mean a, um, an imp that you haven't placed this turn. So if you have any imps in your burrow you can use that to to handle the need or yep, you can place a suffering token on it for pet. This is a magic need. Basically, you're going as long as the number of magic needs that you assign to a pet is less than or equal to this magical defense number on its cage, then you're fine. Uh, if it's not, for each number, for each uh, magic need that's greater than than the defense value of your cage, you're going to have to place a mutation token on your pet. Mutation tokens make um, your pets less valuable when you sell them and uh, less desirable in some exhibitions. This is an anger need. To resolve an anger need, you, it's kind of like a magical need. You're going you're gonna to count up the number of anger needs you assign to the pet, and if it's less than this red defense value of your cage, then you're okay. If it's greater, though, then for each one, for each one that's greater, you're going to have to either place an imp that you haven't used that's in your burrow into the hospital, or if you can't do that, the creature, your pet, breaks loose and it's gone you lose it and you also lose reputation for that. This is a disease need so you're going to take the number of disease needs that you assign to this pet you're going to add the number of manure tokens that's in the cage and if it's greater than two you have to place one suffering token on the pet because it got sick and then one suffering token on the pet for each one that it exceeded two. So hopefully that makes sense. Basically, you're going to add up the suffering, add up the manure. If it's greater than two, at least one, or actually at least two, and then uh, an extra one, you know, one for sure, and then one for every one that you exceed two by. 
And then finally, there's the potion. The potion is a wild card that can um, take the place of any need, um, but then you have to discard a card of the color of the need that you're playing it as. So example, for example, if I played this instead of that disease need, I would have to discard a purple one um, to the discard pile, as well as use the potion. So those are the needs cards. So you're going to resolve all those need cards, and then you're going to move into the exhibition. You're going to use the needs that you assigned to look at the exhibition and to sell your pet. So that's what we're going to look at next time. Let's look at ways to get victory points and win the game. We'll look at scoring an exhibition, selling your pet, and then the final scoring. So scoring an exhibition, um, the first thing you want to look at is this little symbol up in the upper left. If it's just one cage, that means you're going to pick one of your pets to enter into the exhibition. If it's uh, four cages, you're going to actually total up your score for all of your pets. So, uh, each of these exhibitions is listed in the rule book exactly how it works, but usually you can tell based on the icons how, how you're supposed to do it. So what you're going to do is you're going to score uh, what's called exhibition points, and then uh, when you get your exhibition point total, you're going to move your marker to that. So say I scored six exhibition points, I'm going to move mine there. Then the next player, you know, if they scored eight, they'll move their marker there. And then you're going to look at these little imps here. So for a two-player game, you're going to look at these imps. Three-player, you're going to look at those. First place gets six victory points. So I'll move my victory point marker up six. Second place gets two points, and they'll move theirs up two. <coughs> That's the actual victory point markers. And then um, these go back down to zero. Now don't forget if you put a if you have the an imp on this space it gives you a plus two so in that case if it was six and eight that would give me plus two It'd give me eight and for a tie if, if, um, you have to check the rule book but I'm pretty sure you split the the value okay so that's an overview how they work so how do you get these match points these exhibition points I mean well the icons in the light box are going to be positive. The icons in the dark box are going to be negative. So, so for th this example, you're going to score one exhibition point for every different color of need you currently have assigned to your pet. And you're going to lose one exhibition point for every mutation you have on your pet, every manure cubes on your pet, and every suffering cube on your pet. So you'll total those up, and then that's the number of exhibition points you'll get. Of course, each of these are different. For example, in this one, you get one point for every magic need assigned to your pet. Now remember, you're looking at these needs that you currently have assigned to the pets. You know, every, every round you're going to draw a certain number and then you're going to assign those and then you're going to evaluate them and then that's what you're going to base your score, gonna score off from. <coughs> so each of these are different. <coughs> This one you're going to get two points for every hunger need you have assigned and a minus one point for every uh, disease need you have assigned. So that's how you score exhibitions. You, you generate your exhibition score, move your marker, and then whoever's in first place gets a certain number of points, whoever's second, whoever's third gets a certain number of points. Now selling a pet is pretty much the same thing. The first thing you need to keep in mind is that you can only sell pets that are um, three I mean four size or bigger. So example this one uh, has only three. <coughs> you can see a little X with a money sign. That means you cannot sell this pet. But when it gets older then you can see now it shows you how much that pet's worth. So basically you're going to look at whoever the current dungeon lord is for this turn. You're going to pick one pet to sell to that person if possible. And what you're going to do is generate match points, which are pretty much the same as exhibition points. So to generate match points for this one, for example, you'll get two match points for every anger need assigned to your pet, one match point for every uh, magic need, <coughs> minus one for every play need, minus one for every suffering, because this, this customer does not want playful pets, or you know pets that are in suffering, of course. So then you're going to total those up and get a match score and if your match score is greater than zero then you can sell your pet to that person and what you'll do is you'll take your match score then and if you have an imp on the platform then you can remove that imp put it in your empty cage where it'll go home next turn and you'll get three times your match score in victory points so if my match score was two then I would get six victory points I'd move my victory point marker up six 
Now if you don't have an imp there on the platform, you have to sell it on the black market. And you can see that is only it gives you times two. So if I had two, vic two match points, then I would only score four victory points. But I wouldn't have to have an imp on the platform. So that's why the imps on the platforms are important. They basically give you an extra, they give you a times three instead of a times two. So let's see. Again, you generate those match scores um, the same as exhibitions. Like this one will give you one point for every hunger need, one point for every manure uh, need, one point for every uh, anger need, but a minus one for a disease and a minus one for suffering. This one will give you three points for every different color of sickness card and one uh, point for every anger and a minus one for every hunger and a minus one for every suffering. So again, these customers are all lined out in the rule book if you need to look it up exactly how it works, but usually you can just kind of go based off of the icons. So when you sell a pet, you're going to remove it from the cage and you're going to get the number of victory points based on your match score times either two or three. Then you're going to get the number of gold that's listed on that pet. <coughs> And again, each customer can buy one pet from each player. And the last turn, turn six, is actually going to have two customers. So you can sell two pets on the last turn. Now, after turn six is over with, you're going to do final scoring. And final scoring is done as two separate exhibitions. So for this first exhibition, you're going to get a half exhibition point for every gold piece that you have. You're going to get one piece for every uh, food, potion, or artifact that's on your burrow board. And you're going to subtract two points for every imp that's not at home, that's not on your burrow board. So that means every imp that's still left on the platform or every imp that's still up here on the progress bar, that these relatives that you didn't bring home, that you didn't hire, those are each going to give you a minus two points. So you're going to score that just like an exhibition. You're going to total up your match score, you're going to move it over here, and then the winner is going to get this certain number of points, and then second place and third place, so on. Once you're done with that, you're going to do this last exhibition. You get two points for every unsold pet you have, one point for every uh, cage you have and every add-on you have, and you're going to minus, get minus one point for every mutation, manure, or suffering token that you have on your board. And so again, that's going to be just like an exhibition. You're going to move them, score the match point, or exhibition points, move your token, and then the first player is going to get a certain number of victory points. After that's done, whoever is higher on the victory point chart, who has the most victory points, is going to win the game. So that's Dungeon Pets. Kind of went over it fast, and I know it seems like there's a lot of stuff, but again, it all kind of gels as you play. Uh, everything has some neat, nice little icons that once you get the hang of them, uh, makes it pretty easy to tell what needs to happen next and what's going on. Uh, the strategy, though, <laughs> is a little bit more difficult. Uh, just trying to keep your pets alive, trying to figure out what you need to get the best score in the exhibition. Um, I mean, it's the kind of game that you can think you can think a lot about it and still mess up and and not not a score a whole lot of points but you know that's what makes it interesting and fun so hopefully this video has been um, helpful to you and hopefully you can sit down and play the game without having to spend a lot of time in the rule book although I will mention that this is the funniest rule book I've ever read so um, you definitely want to read it it's got a lot of little uh, funny little jokes and stuff plus some cool little pictures of imps and creatures and all that stuff so I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time thanks a lot and uh, enjoy happy happy gaming <laughs>